Hello everybody, I'm Dave Silverbrand and this is Access Humboldt's Community Voices. I'm your host and we're talking to somebody, this sounds cliche, but somebody who needs no introduction at all. Everybody knows Betty Chin, Betty Quan Chin Day Center. Thank you so Hi. much for being here. I see you. It, Thank it's you. such a blessing. It really is. You. you walk in the room and you know that there's something right with the world all of a sudden. You I know don't that know. when you walk in. <laughs> that's a good know. that's a tribute. That's I a would good say. thing. Yeah. yeah. What sort of things have you been working on lately that have been challenging to you? Um, I work on every day, and then uh, we always have something new mm -hmm. and always change. I just, whatever we need, and I should be there. So I've uh, been watching for uh, um, the, the village, uh, family shelter, mm -hmm. and the respite, and the center, and plus outreach to uh, all the way from Oret to Weird. So always, all the time on the highway and on in the city, yeah, everywhere. Wherever they need me, I'm there. A lot of miles on the, is it the Blue Angel? Is that what the truck yes. is called? A lot of miles on that, I'm sure. Yeah, a lot of miles and yeah. yes. What has been the biggest challenge for you lately? Because there's still, um, a lot of people are still trying to come to terms with what, number one, what homelessness is. Oh, the so major need is housing. Mm -hmm. And then that's what we try to do. And then, and really lucky, we really successful. Everybody uh, in our family shelter or respite, after they done the term for us, they always have somewhere to go. At our village, 51 percent people got housing and got jobs. They are really cognate homeless people. They come straight from the street and no ID card, no driver license, and no money and they are in the free layer, uh, out of luck, mental ill, mm -hmm. or uh, drug addiction. So they come in, they find peace in their heart, they decide to build a better life themselves, and then we support them all the way. How do you, um, so they inherently do want peace in their hearts in one way or another, and some of them unfortunately have found a not productive way to do it. How do you uh, help people get their feet under themselves and, and move forward in a positive way? Well, when they come to our center, they say uh, they need help. And then I ask them what, what, how we can help you. Mm. I am not here to neighbor in you. If you want to change your life, I cannot change your life. You have to do it yourself, but I support you. Walk with your journey and get wherever you need to go. And most important, they had to find themselves had enough confidence to hold a job. Mm -hmm. So we had job training, and then we opened up from a local business. We had, like now, we had 20 local business uh, uh, offering a job to our people. Really? Yes. Do you uh, get a chance to meet most of these people personally, the people who are needing? Oh, we had a very strong staff. Yes, I meet them first, and then our staff talk to them, and then we had a very, very strong and uh, and very passionate um, whole staff in there to help these people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, um, so if people want to work and may not even know how to work or how to get to do a job on time or how to to follow directions from somebody else, you teach them. Well, not, not necessary. They had to work. They come into us and we held them. We showed them. We loved them. We want to help them. The powers come to themselves to want to change. Mm -hmm. Sometimes work, sometimes doesn't work. If it doesn't work, we can help them get some assistance for them, like a cow first um, money or GR money, helping out, and then try to get them off the street. Mm -hmm. and, and then that's what we're doing. The program is only 90 days program, and we had a 51% success for so very, wow. very good, yeah. And a lot of, we had somebody never worked for in 20 years. Hmm. And then they, they feel like they want to do something, but what happened when you be a homeless, carry all your stuff, mm -hmm. and nobody, you got a private job, what are you going to contact you? They had nowhere to contact you. Now they had a place they can contact them, and they had a phone, and we can uh, we help them write resume, and then that is really step by step. But it's not easy. Yeah. Not easy, and special deal with the mental health um, people and clients. And I worked on one guy for 15 years. Really. Still back and forth, back and forth. I tell our staff, my own self, one step forward and two step backward. And then that's what happened. 
So we, ourselves, our step, myself, we had to find a peace in our heart. That's what we want to do. That's a passion. When you work for the nonprofit, they don't pay a lot. Mm -hmm. And so they had to have passion to, uh, for these people. So that's why we are so successful. And then um, they a oh, good team, young team. Yeah. So in this particular case, you had to say, we'll try this. When that doesn't work, you have to regroup and try something else, something else. No, and then uh, I had their own will. Like uh, even mental health people come in, right? Mm -hmm. And then I want to work, Miss Betty. I don't want it always. When they lean there, they feel safe. They have their own key and their own space. And they want to do something for themselves. I always tell them, don't do it for me, do it for yourself. So if they cannot hold a job, they can do some gardening job, a day job. When they do a day job for somebody and then come back, when they get paid, they get sweat. Mm -hmm. and get paid. That's what I build himself up. And then that's it. And I don't have to match a finger there, but they had to do it themselves. Yeah. yeah. And uh, are the issues different with women than with men, women who are, who are dealing with homelessness or... Um, because I, the reason I ask that is because I've met with uh, women at the uh, Eureka Rescue Mission, and mm -hmm. in the morning they say, they leave the rescue mission. They say, we're going over to Betty Chin's office because we want a job. We want to work. We want to take care of ourselves. We want self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of cases, they have been uh, either abused or in some other way exploited by yes. men. So you've got that dynamic going at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then that's what happened. And then um, when a client sometimes come to complain about mission or and other agency, I say, you know what? We all work together to help you, but different a way to help you. Mm -hmm. So when they out and they come to us, and then we help them, um, help this woman look for a job, look for family, and then they can stay with a computer, and then we do the um, parenting skill uh, class for them too. Mm. Yeah, we do that, and then um, we we all here together to help them, but different way. You know, and uh, we we lucky. We had 12, 14 computer there. Really? Mm -hmm. We had people help them use the attack the computer class and write resume. And really, really, I mean, when you come down, I, I also, I don't want too many people come at the same time. I want everybody come in and have their own space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be a homeless, never has space. Always together, always carry stuff. I want to focus on a computer, focus on what they want to do. And then nobody listened to her, and she had a privacy. Sometimes I had somebody come in very shy, doesn't want to in a, in a computer lab, and I would set up one single in a one room. They can stay in there to do it themselves too. Where, what is your source? I, I would have my own guesses, but what is your source of inspiration that keeps you uh, continuing with this task? I, I tell you what happened. I live in a wonderful community. Mm -hmm. And I, I always tell them, and you don't have to get me your money, you are good to me. Whenever I go, and a nice community always smile at me, always smile at me. And then um, my, my own self, I, I really appreciate this country and mm -hmm. this community and because of my freedom. You cannot put a, a price tag on the freedom. No. And that's what my way to pay back to this country, this community, for my freedom to help somebody who need help. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the way that you uh, articulate, or, or they're so clear about yourself and so open about yourself mm -hmm. and the ways that you present needs to people. The best story that I remember so vividly, and I think you told it to me one time, yes. was when um, uh, the late Father Eric Fried said, yes. uh, what do you need? And he was probably expecting an answer like, I need a, a financial grant or this or that. You said, I need peanut butter. That's what you told him. So he went out and, and bought a big jug. Of I still have one bucket in my kitchen remind me, remind, remember of Father Eric. Yeah. Really? Just two days before he died, and he gave me six bucket peanut butter. Wow. Every time when I look at that, I know Father Eric with me. And then I went in one night, and, and you had some volunteers there making sandwiches. 
And I said, you don't realize this, but you're using uh, Father Eric Reed's peanut butter to make these sandwiches. And it was, yeah. put it on a whole different spiritual level. Yeah. It was an amazing yeah. feeling. Yeah, I feel like I, um, for myself, I'm not kind of quit myself down, okay? I am an education woman. I am not good follow direction. <laughs> and I had no patience. And I feel like uh, I'm choosing one. Uh -huh. Each day has somebody super power, my God, or somebody guide me each step. When I had no money and I tell David Tyson, I say, I want a center. Mm -hmm. We got a center. And that's, that's how they work. And then, um, so that, I don't know. I don't plan anything. I just, I see the need and I tell our board and they help me get it. We had a wonderful board member mm -hmm. to, to really behind me. I know, know the outreach, I do a social service, but I am not good with the paperwork. Like I said, I don't do paperwork and they done that for me, yeah. yeah. And you also seem unaffected by people who uh, heap praise on you, like uh, the CNN here or the latest thing. You just keep on keeping on. Well, I miss it. You know, to hear, I tell them when they ask me about it, it this is not just me. It is a whole community. And I cut myself out with the CNN because I remember President Obama tell me, you had a voice for the homeless. You should speak up. And that's what I always on my mind, always think about it. And I put myself out there. Um, people like it, the people not like it. I, you know, I get spit by my face. I mm -hmm. get shoot by BB gun. I get through a rock. And I had tell me, say, go back where you belong. And, but this is my personal, I should put my personal feeling aside. Mm -hmm. But I had a bigger patch to do. And then I had speak up for the people who doesn't speak in for it. And uh, it's a matter of fact, you talk about CNN, I always do even. I, from three o'clock out of my house, I won't go home until midnight. And this is the first time, when they came here to a recorder, first time I see myself how much I done. I never see that. I never even noticed. I didn't know that. I tell them first time in the daylight time, I see what I done. Yeah. And where I go, always driving the highway everywhere. And I didn't feel they was keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So, uh, well, let me ask you this then. So you were talking about a permanent housing situation, mm -hmm. and you were uh, kind of rebuffed in that particular case. Yeah. yeah. Not to bring up the negative, but what, how, do you, what, how do you regroup and say, well, you know what? I, I'm doing the right thing anyway, so I'm just going to keep on doing what I do. Well, I, I tell you what, the, the permanent house and pool women is help the people. It's almost there. Mm -hmm. And then ready to have jobs, and then they, they pay rent to earn a two years rental uh, quartlet. Without the quartlet, nobody would rent a place to them. Mm -hmm. Who would rent if somebody had no house and uh, no record and a uh, rental record? So that's my plan. So they can feel like a 40 some people. But unfortunately, um, we stuck it here. Yeah. And I don't know. And then, um, you know, I disappointed. I still had hope. I still had hope. I'm not giving up yet. But also, I have tell myself, say, it's my time. It's my time. It's not, it's not my time yet. Mm -hmm. That you have to be that way. I cannot. Uh, I don't want to fight. When you do this kind of stuff, you have to find a peace in your heart. Yeah. If you fighting, fighting, and fighting, and I go nowhere. Yeah. My energy had to for somebody who need me, my help. I cannot get angry. I cannot get upset or feel emotional. I that had to cut the sign. And you probably have an effect on people that you don't even realize. Maybe people you'll never even meet are affected by the fact that you're here right now or here doing whatever you do. Thank you. But you know, funny things happened today. <laughs> I got a call from Germany. Uh huh. And the young man was here a few years ago, the trimmer. Uh huh. And then he cut, and then um, he got in trouble. I bought the air ticket and sent him home. Uh -huh. And this morning, and he called me. He saw CNN, and then, and and then, so nice to hear from him. He's safe and he's happy. 
Isn't that it something? Can, See? Oh, Lord, outside the world. And then also I, I get a call from Beijing, China. Uh-huh. And they saw the uh, from CNN too. Did they? <laughs> it's oh, kind of funny, heart. yeah. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. Yeah, and then she said, "I'm so grateful you talk about your supper," mm -hmm. and I tell them, um, "I'm not uh, insulting my country, anything, my motherland, or anything, but I do tell the people when you suffer." Make you more stronger. It's true. And make you more want to do something. And yeah. then I, I tell everybody my passion for the homeless is a building and sitting by the time when I was a child. Yeah. You're such a blessing. You really are. Thank <laughs> no. you so much, Betty. No, thank you. I so appreciate you and the fact that you're able to talk about this and be with us. We're just so blessed to have you among us. And thank you. That's all I can say. Thank you. And I'll talk to you anytime. Okay. There thank you, you go. Thank and you. that is really all the time we have for today. I have to sit and ponder this conversation a little bit because it's thank just, uh, it's, it's amazing. Thank I want to thank my guest, uh, Betty Chin of the Betty Guan Chin Center, and for all the things that you have done and do and, and everything that you are. Uh, it's just a treasure that, that you're among us. We're so fortunate and lucky to have you here. But thank you, and remember to a whole community met the word. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. Well, I won't forget. <laughs> so thank you so much, and okay. thank you, and we'll see you next time on Community Voices. Thank you.